you will experience an unstoppable increase I say you will experience an unstoppable increase please join me as I invite my father in the Lord the deputy continental overseer of the redeemed Christian Church of God in the whole of America let's jump those hands together as I invite Pastor Femi Olawale is the country coordinator of the redeemed Christian Church of God in Canada praise the Lord tremble at your feet to recognize the sovereignty of heaven father please take your place this morning we pray that you will gather together with us minister life to each and every one of us do not leave us to go empty handed in Jesus mighty name we pray amen. let's say a better amen. amen you may please take your seat the Lord bless you I want to thank God for the opportunity to come into your midst and especially to fellowship with the people of God, the Jesus house in the Saskatoon. The Lord himself will perfect everything that concerns you. And uh, it is my prayer also that uh, nobody will go out of this place empty handed. Thank God for the opportunity that pastor has given us to be in house today. And he said to me also that, Pastor, it's been a while that you have been around here. I said, well, uh, I don't even know when, but uh, I only go to where they invite me to come. <laughs> even though I know I can say I'm coming, but I prefer to say, Pastor, can you come? I said, I'll come. Because so that when I finish speaking, he won't say, but you are the one that came home. <laughs> Thank you for all the hospitalities and all the care. The Lord bless you. I decided not to eat, but Pastor Mrs. will not leave me alone. She said I must grow fat before I leave this place. I said many people have tried it. I can't increase in weight. It is well with us in Jesus' name. And I thank God for what the Lord is doing in the Saskatoon area and the Saskatchewan province. The Lord will continue to multiply his presence and the name of the Lord will continue to be glorified. I know we have just about 30 minutes to run, minus how many minutes already? So we will try, I will try my best. I'm used to preaching for one hour, but don't worry. We will see what we can do within the space of 30 minutes, and then we will be on top of the game. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Let's open our Bible to Job chapter number one. Job chapter one, I'm going to read from verses number six through to verse number 10. Job chapter 1 from verses number 6 through to verse number 10. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, As thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God, and ensured evil. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? Doth Job fear God for naught? Has not thou made an edge about him, and about his house, and about all that he has on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. May the Lord bless the reading of his word, and multiply it into our spirit man, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You are talking about unstoppable increase. And I will show you, I'm sure some of you are looking at this picture. Where is unstoppable increase? Yeah, you will see it very soon. You see, when God wants to bless a man, he must first of all place an edge around him. 
So this morning, I want to share with you very briefly, edge or wall around him. So that when God has, in, has designed you for increase, there are certain things, the man of God that prayed here this morning said, God, open our eyes to the things we must do such that our unstoppable increase will continue to be. And he prayed it in a reverse way. What must we do to secure this unstoppable increase? This is what we want to learn here. Now, what I said to you, when the Lord wants to increase or bless a man, he will first of all put an edge or protective wall around him. Because if that wall is not there, there is a devil somewhere. There is an agent of darkness somewhere. That is the enemy of our soul somewhere that wants to penetrate and to make sure that that increase will not be sustained. And to make sure that you don't have increase in the first place. You say, Pastor, how do you know what you are telling us? You know the question God asked the devil. He said, where are you coming from? The man said, I've been going to and fro all over the face of the earth. And walking up and down, it didn't stop there. Give us verse number 10 on the screen. It didn't stop there. He said, has thou not made an edge about him and about his house and about all that he has on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hand and the substance of his increase in the land. How did he know? How did the devil know? Huh? He adopted it. That's it. You got it. When God wants to increase a man, he must, first of all, put what? Edge around him. And when he does, then God will begin to increase. Because the devil is ever going around looking for whom he may what? Devour. That's why the scripture said to us in that John 10 verse number 10, the ministry of the devil. He has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. The devil will not want to say God should not increase you. He knows that he cannot increase you permanently. But he knows that when God increases a man, that man is increased. So, But what he does is to come around and prowl around the edges to see whether he can get to the man, and then destroy, because that's all he does. So no matter what increase God is bringing to the life of a man, there is a devil, and there is an agent of darkness out there, ready to do what? To destroy. So what you need to understand, therefore, to make a perpetuity of your increase, is to prevent and to ensure that the enemy that is prowling around will not be able to come in. So, will the devil come in under the watch of the Almighty God? No. no. So, how does the devil come in? How do we allow the devil to come in? Let's look at some scriptures. But the way I want us to look at this is this. Let's look at the positive side of the scripture first. What has God put in place? To edge us in. To wall us in. So that the enemy of our soul will not penetrate. Number one. We will not finish everything here. What I will advise is that what I cannot finish in the first service. Don't worry. We will complete it in the second one. But one thing that is so sure is that the same conclusion they will get in the second service, you will get your own also. Amen. Are we together? Uh -huh. So if I jump anything, it is not so much of what you are going to miss, but what you want to get to the conclusion. All right? Now, one thing I notice in Exodus chapter number 12, verse number 7, hear what the scripture says. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door post of the houses where they shall eat it. This is God trying to establish the Passover in the land of Egypt. So I'm going to be giving you some introduction. Don't worry, but you will get it. In the land of Egypt, the Bible says God sent Moses to the land. He said, go and deal with that Pharaoh. Tell him, let my people go that they may serve me. 
The Bible says Moses came almost through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine plagues. The man refused to let them go. Then God said something to Moses. Say, don't worry. I have been sending you to the Lord of Egypt. They have refused you. I am coming myself. And when I come, you know, that's why Mo Timothy said, and Paul said to Timothy, he said, nobody has ever seen God. He said, if any man sees God, he will die. God said the same thing to Moses. He said, you will see me face to face, you will die as an ordinary man. You need to be transformed before you see God. Are we together? That is where, let me give you an, a, a, an additional one. That is why you get to be closer to God when you pray and fast. Because when you are praying and fast, you are dying to yourself gradually, the more. And you are getting closer to him. That's why when you see people go for 40 days, they come down, they are carrying God like no man's business. That's on the side. But when God wanted to show up, God now said to Moses, I'm going to show up, but as I show up, the spirit of death will come. And that time, the spirit of God, death will go all around the entire land. And anywhere I don't see the blood, death will strike. And God now said to him, you can build a wall around you. How? By placing the blood there. I call it the wall of the blood. Or the edge of the blood. So wherever the blood is, the man, the God of heaven said, when I see the blood, I will pass over. There is no devil that can pass through the wall of the blood. Remember, we said the devil is prowling around the edge. What edge? The edge of the blood. Tell your neighbor, I'm covered with the blood of Jesus. My increase remains unstoppable. Only when you are covered with the blood. Are you getting it? When I am covered with the blood. The Bible tells us in that verse 12, 13 of that chapter 12 again. Exodus 12, 13. It said, and the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood. When the spirit of death see the blood. When the increase of God is upon your life. To its sound hell. When the increase of God is upon your life with multiplication all over the place and the devil comes, he says, when he sees the blood, he dare not branch there. He will do what? He will pass over. The enemy shall not come into your household. Amen. I didn't hear your better amen. amen. The Bible says to us in that Hebrews chapter 12 just to establish the blood as a coverage in verse number 24 the Bible says we have come to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaks, that speaks better things than the blood of Abel. You see, the reason why the blood is an edge around us, when the enemy come attacking from outside, Jesus Christ answers them, you don't even know where you are sleeping. The blood is the edge that covers you all. That speaks against all. You see, I don't know whether you will understand it. You see, where I came from, I don't know where you come from. Where I came from, when the enemy wants to attack you, they will wait for the time you are sleeping in the night. And when they come around, they don't need to come into your house. Uh, they just need to stand outside. And they just make some utterances. And when they realize that you are too powerful for them, they will not make utterances just like that. They will raise up one leg. Oh, yes. And when they begin to speak, the words that you have that is not sufficient to resist it will break off. And the man will penetrate. But when you are operating under the blood, let the man be speaking. The Bible says there is a blood Amen. that speaks better things. All around the air, you will be speaking. When the man gets to another level of incantation, the blood will go to another level. And they will not be able to penetrate because they kept on Trying it every now and then. Otherwise, the devil will not say, uh -uh, you said I should touch this man. Look at what you have done now. You have placed an egg around him. Like I told you, how did you know? He had tried it. Brethren, there is an edge of the blood around you. Let me give you two more. Let me give you two more. You see, there is something that God did for the man called Elisha. 
And he has done it for us who are children of God too in the 21st century. And those of us who are Pentecostals, and not even Pentecostal, those of us who are in the New Testament, I call it the edge of fire. I call it what? The wall of fire. The scripture said to us in Zechariah chapter number 2, verses 4 and 5. Zechariah chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. Then I will now go and give you the illustration. The scripture said, And he said unto him, Run, speak to this young man, saying, Jerusalem shall be inhabited as towns without walls. For what? For the multitude of men and cattle, they are to be daring. Verse number 5. Let's read that together. For I, say the Lord, For I says the Lord, uh -huh. a wall of what? A wall of what? Round about. Right? And what will happen? When the wall of God, God himself forms a wall of fire around you, excuse me, who will penetrate? Who will penetrate? The devil? The devil cannot. He dare not try it. So that is why when God says, I am going to give you an unstoppable manifestation, it may not just be increased, it may be anything you can have from God. He said, look, I need to, even the devil said, you have guarded him. There's nobody that can touch him. My agents cannot touch him. Myself, I cannot touch him. But you remove it and you will see what we can do. Are you together with me? No wonder in that second king's chapter number six, the Bible says the king of Syria waged war against the king of Israel. And every time he wants to go, he will plan in his bedroom. And before you know it, there is a man in Israel who will say, go and tell the king of Israel, don't go this place, don't go that place. Suddenly, the king of Syria now said, excuse me, there must be a spy among you here. He said, one of the servants said, Master, there is no spy here. The spy you are looking for is in the land of Israel. He will stay in his land, in his room. Whatever you say in your bedroom, he hears it. Sir, brethren, I am looking for, I am trusting God, don't worry. All of us together, we will get to that point. Where am I talking about? Where nobody can say any evil things against us. In your place of chamber, you will say, I know what you are planning. I said, how did you know? He said, go and try it. You will see. And the man will wonder, this is true Christianity, sir. Christianity is not a matter of coming here, stepping on our toes, and fighting on one another. One another. No! That's not the type of Christianity me I want. I want Christianity where I will go to the parliament hill, and I will tell them, listen to me, my house is so, 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 so place. That is where I live. If you do not stop all this activity in this nation, this is what is going to happen to you. And I go back to my house. Am I hidden? No. That is the way to manifest God in the 21st century. Let us pursue that. As against fighting one another. That's not what we need. We need to demonstrate to the world that we are living under his covering. And you will do and tell my enemy I am here. You cannot do me anything. So the scripture says... The king said, okay, therefore, get me armies. Go there and arrest that man for me. God is so, God is, God is very humorous. You know one thing God didn't do? God didn't tell Elisha that you are coming. Even though he has heard everything about the king and he was relaying to the king. But when it came to him, he didn't tell him. Why? Because God wanted to show himself. And the scripture says they came all night. The enemy always come overnight. Take notes. So when they arrived, the scripture says the servant of the man of God went out. And when he saw the host, he was afraid. He ran inside and said, Master, we are perished. And the master said, what is the problem? He said, come and see. The host of Syria are here. And the man laughed. Oh, I love that kind of lifestyle. And the man, and the man said, God, bring your hand, my friend. He said, God, open his eyes. And when his eyes were open, the Bible said he saw chariots of fire all around. Excuse me, if you are that servant, what will you do afterwards? Say, if they burn you well, come here. Are, are we together? 
You see, this is what God does to keep a man under unstoppable increase. Every child of God must not be a beggar. Every one of us, we must not be. Every, we may start as a beggar, but we cannot end as a beggar. No, sir. Because my father, even the devil recognizes it, that look, you have placed a double edge, the edge of the blood. And which one again? The edge of fire. How many of you that believe that edge of fire is around you? Remain under it in Jesus' name. The scripture says to us, the air and myself, the wall of fire shall be a defense. He said it to us in that Zechariah. I hope you remember. Let me, because of our time, don't worry. I will try to be within time. God will help us. Okay? Let me give, I told you I'm going to give you two more. Then we'll shoot towards the end. Let me give you one more. Now, when you look at the scripture very well, in Genesis chapter 32, something happened there. But let me give you the one that you understand so well. You know, in Exodus chapter 14, when the people of Israel had left Egypt and they were advancing towards the promised land and they got to the Red Sea. And the scripture says that God went before them in a pillar of cloud and a pillar of fire in the night. But we have not known fire and I mean, the cloud and the fire until they got into the wilderness. This is just about going in there. And the scripture says the angel of the Lord went before them. Then the Egyptian advanced from behind and the Red Sea was before them. Then something happened. God knows that they could not by any chance escape because these ones had horses and chariots coming after them. And then these ones were just walking barefooted towards the sea. What will happen? The scripture said the angel of the Lord that was before them did what went to the back you think the angel of the lord doesn't know why he must go to the back he went to the back and the scripture says it stood in between the people of israel and the egyptian and that one was not able to come to another all night are you ready before angels can be a war that's what i'm telling you now when they stood there, you see, it is you that is looking at it that they are very close. Mm, they were not close. You know why they were not close? The scripture said to us, if you look at that chapter number 14, I think from verse 19 to 20, give it to us first, please, very quickly. From that verse 19, chapter 14 of Exodus, verse 19. The scripture says, and the angel of God, which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them, and the pillar of the cloud went from before their face and stood behind them. And it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. And it was a cloud. I want you to listen to this. And it was what? Uh-huh. To who? Darkness to who? Uh-huh. But it gave what? Uh-huh. Excuse me, I don't know whether they speak tongues here. But I don't know whether I should give you that tongue. But let me keep quiet about it. Let me show you this. Sir, if somebody is, in, is seeing the angel on one side, the scripture says he's seeing what? Night. What were you supposed to do in the night? You sleep, huh? And you are on this side and you are seeing the day. What are you supposed to do? So, when you are advancing, something is happening here. They are doing what? When they get to the day, you have already gone. When the Lord gives you the edge of angel, sir, whatever your increase is, you are enjoying it. Because the enemy is either sleeping or is just lost in the sense that the night can never catch up with the day. Let's move forward because of my time. Don't worry. I will work with your time. Don't worry yourself. I will jump very quickly, but I promised you, get it on the other side. All right? Now, I'm jumping towards the conclusion. What is it that can stop my unstoppable increase? Remember, 
we said the devil went around without being invited. He went about doing whatever he wants to do. When the edge is broken, when the edge is broken, the serpent will bite. I repeat, when the edge of the wall that God has placed around us is broken, serpents will do what? Will bite. And the devil is a merciless serpent. Remember, he was never invited. He's been looking at how many of you have you seen a goat kept in a cage and you put a lion outside? Let's put it that way. Think about it. The lion will keep on circling that gate, waiting for any opportunity. And can you imagine that, that goat who is so careless and came out? That lion will not spare. How many of you have seen, have you gone to the zoo before? When you give a goat to a lion, in fact, when you come back, you will practically see nothing. The lion eats even the bones. They crush it completely. Especially a lion that is very, very ferocious. Not only ferocious, but very hungry. What am I telling you this morning? It is only you that can stop your unstoppable increase. If you break the edge, sin breaks edges. Iniquity breaks edge. Disobedience breaks edge. Are you, are you together with me? We have only three minutes more. This one, you see, you need to understand it. That if a man allows himself to break the egg, the serpent will bite. I give you just two illustrations, then we'll pray. Number one, in Numbers chapter 22, the people of Moab, they were there in their land, and the people of Israel, they arrived. And Balak saw them, he was afraid. And he called Balaam, come and curse these people for me, so that I can destroy them. Everything Balaam tried, he couldn't touch them. He said, these people are blessed. You can't curse them, you can only bless them. Well, you know one thing the scripture said? The scripture says, Balaam now taught Balak what to do. He said, as long as these people does not commit any sin, you can't penetrate. Get them to commit sin. That's all. What do you do? Invite them to come and worship, to come to your party. Those of you that go to different parties without any carefulness, you just go anywhere. You don't know what is happening. The Bible says he now invited them to come and they actually committed sin big time. And of course, God removed the edge immediately. And the devil struck big time. Number two, Mr. Samson was a very strong man of God. In Judges chapter 13, all the way to chapter 16. I wouldn't go to details. But the scripture said to us that the man went to Timnath in chapter 14 verse 1. And he saw a lady. And said, I want that lady. Everybody will say, but it was of God according to the scripture. When he got to chapter 16, he went again to Gaza. And he saw an harlot this time around. Not a lady. An harlot. And went in unto her. Verses 1 and 2. But when you are getting to verse number 4 and 5. The Bible says he now saw and met and loved. Loved. An harlot. In the valley of Sorek. Called Delilah. And the man was playing with sin. The man who was aged before. And the Bible says that after some time. He started sleeping on the lap of Delilah. A man of God that carries power. And before you know it, the edge was broken. And when the edge was broken, the devil showed up with, by the Philistines, by the lords of the Philistines. And you know what? They did an irreversible damage to him. That is why I am telling you today, don't allow the enemy to do an irreversible damage to your life. As you go around, hey, the devil also is prowling looking for how to break him. And if that edge is broken, the devil shows up, there will be so much trouble. It is my prayer that somebody under the sound of the voice of the Holy Spirit will not allow the enemy to come and bow down your head. I want all eyes closed and all head bowed because of what I want to ask now. 
Now, I want you to listen to me within these few minutes. I know pastor will forgive me because we are closing at 9 30, but don't worry. We are almost there. With all eyes closed, I want to ask this question. All I need you to do is to raise up your hand. Listen to this. You are here in this congregation. You know it that you have broken the edge already. You, are, oh, you don't even know where the devil can start. You know it. You have broken the edge already. Number two, you know it that you are about to break the edge. And if not for this message, certain things will happen to you. Two people. One, I have broken the edge. The devil is biting me already. I know I am about to break the edge. I have not beaten yet, but I know there's something wrong already. Now, those people, just raise up your hand. All eyes closed. All head bowed. Let me see your hand above your head if you are raising it up. Then I can pray for you. I'm not asking anybody to come out. I said, close your eyes. You are opening your eyes. What's your business? Raise up your hand if you know you are trusting God. I can see one hand there. Any other fellow, please, before I pray. My Father and my Lord in heaven, the faithfulness of God is here in the house. Look at your daughter. Look at your son. These ones are faithfully raising up their hand. You know what they have done. We are not calling anybody out here. It is not a time of bringing shame to anybody. Father, we are pleading for your mercy. Let the edge be mend, O oh Lord. Let the edge be closed up again. Do not allow the devil to strike this one. Is anyone been stricken already? Father, we snatch such a fellow out of the hand of the enemy and bring him back or her back into the, into the fold. Cover them up again, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Put down your hand. Put down your hand. Stand up on your feet, please, every one of us. Why don't you just commit yourself to God? Father, secure my edge. Whatever it is, O oh God, and whatever it is blessing of God upon my life, secure my edge, O oh God. Let the hand of the Lord be upon me. Let me never stray out of this place. Let me never break the edge. Do not allow the enemy of my soul to glory over me. Thank you, Father. Let my increase remain unstoppable. Let no devil be able to truncate it. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word that you have sent. Sanctify your word into our spirits, man. Let your word continue to encourage us to remain in you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's jam those hands together for Jesus. Let's jam those hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.